Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be going through how to read an annual report or a 10k as the annual report is called for US businesses. So uh, this is a question that I've been getting a lot recently and I thought it was about time that I made a video on this and show you exactly how I go through and read annual reports because as a long-term investor, as someone who is analyzing the fundamentals of a business, uh, a big part of that is to read annual reports and not just to read one annual report, but to read many annual reports over many different years for a particular company. And then also uh, reading the annual reports of competing businesses in the same industry. So I wanted to break down how I go through this. Do I just read an annual report from page one to 180 or however many pages it has? Or are there certain sections that I focus more on and some sections that I don't really look at too much? So that is what we're going to go through in today's video. And as always, if you do enjoy it, I would very much appreciate it if you could leave a like, hit subscribe if you want to see more. And of course, as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. So to make this video a little bit more valuable and easier to understand, uh, we're actually going to head over to my computer and I'm going to walk you through a real life example of an annual report and talk about each of the sections while I'm showing it to you on screen. So that's a little bit easier for you to understand. So uh, the company that I'm going to be using as an example in this video is Texas Roadhouse. And there's no particular reason why I've chosen Texas Roadhouse, except for the fact that it is quite a simple business model model. So it's going to be easy for me to show you each of the components. For those who don't know, Texas Roadhouse is a uh, casual dining restaurant chain in the United States. So without further ado, let's jump over to my laptop and get started at breaking down the major components of an annual report that you should be looking at when you're analyzing a business. All right, so just before we get into the actual annual report, uh, for those who are unaware, uh, this is how you go out and find the annual reports for any company that you're looking for. The first thing you want to do is head over to Google and search the company name along with uh, investor relations. And then you will see that there is an investor relations page for the public company that you're looking at. So uh, let's head into the investor relations page for Texas Roadhouse uh, in this particular example. And you can see here via the drop down menu, uh, we can see there's annual reports here. Uh, sometimes the company won't have an annual reports page. They might just have the SEC filings page, particularly if it's a US company. Uh, so the other way that you can find it if they don't have that uh, is to head into the SEC filings, click annual filings, and you'll be able to find the form 10K is the filing type for an annual report. So let's download that in PDF form and uh, here it is. So the first thing you'll notice is there's a bit of a uh, legal homepage kind of thing here, first page. And then we have a table of contents and there are a lot of different sections uh, in an annual report, but I'm just going to show you the ones that are most important to focus on. And I'm going to talk about what I'm looking for in each as well as how much time I'm spending looking at each of these sections. So the first section you will notice once you scroll down out of the table of contents uh, is a section called business. And uh, this will al almost always be item one. It'll be the first thing in the annual report. Uh, and basically this section includes all information about how the business makes money, what it spends money on, maybe its marketing strategies, where it sources its materials from, the distribution process, and any major competitors that it might have. It's basically all of the information information about the particular business. So in this example for this restaurant company, we can see that uh, we've got a description of the business, which includes how many restaurants they have open, uh, how many of those restaurants are Texas Roadhouse branded, and how many are branded as Bubba's 33, a different type of restaurant. We can see that uh, they explain what Texas Roadhouse restaurants are here. They also explain what Bubba's 33s are. Uh, they have a, an, an operating strategy. So what is their aim at providing the best service? That's all written in there. Uh, they describe 
how much it costs. This is an interesting one for restaurant businesses. How much it approximately costs to open a new restaurant, which at the moment is about $5.2 million. So that's really valuable for us to know how much does it cost for them to open a new restaurant. We can compare that to how much revenue or profit is being generated out of each of those restaurants and we can get a better insight of the return that they're generating on their investments. So uh, this is why I picked a restaurant business to show as an example because it's easy for me to explain uh, how this is applicable to estimating the future cash flows of a business, which is ultimately what we're trying to do. But you can see they talk about how they select sites. So how do they select the locations for their new restaurants? Uh, all of the different types, uh, all, all of the different places that they have restaurants. They have eight in Alabama, um, Illinois, they have 15 and so on and so forth. Uh, they talk about their food, where they source it from, uh, what their standards are for food, their service, uh, people, which would be their employees, uh, their marketing strategy, their restaurant franchise arrangements. So, any franchise setups that they have, what are the arrangements of that? What revenue do they get out of that? What royalties and that sort of thing? And then we've got, as I mentioned, competition, trademarks, uh, and government regulation and seasonality. So just bits and pieces about uh, the main components of the business, uh, the number of employees, 64,900 employees, and then, of course, some of the major executive officers, uh, some of the major directors uh, and managers who are running the company, and a little bit of information about them. Uh, but that basically completes the first section of the annual report. And that is a section that you want to read at least once. So, if you're analyzing a particular company, you don't need to read this section for the past 10 years of annual reports because for the most part, it's going to be very similar. Now, businesses do change their operations over a 10-year period, so it's important to understand what those changes are. But for the most part, I'm going to be reading this section in full for the latest annual report and making sure that I understand all of the different components of the business and how it operates. And then I'll glance over this for the other 10 years of financial reports going back 10 years, because that's what I like to look at. Uh, I won't read it completely, but I'll have a glance to see, for example, with this restaurant business, I would see, okay, how many restaurants did they have five years ago? Did they have a Bubba's 33 five years ago, or is that a new thing that's come up recently? So um, really, I read one in depth for this section, and then I glance over the other years of um, financial reports. And then the second section that we've got here that's important to look at is what's called risk factors. And this is a section where management describes all of the risks that are associated with an investment. So this is super important. Uh, it's so important that you read and understand all of these risk factors as these are the things that are going to prevent your company from providing you the return that you want. Obviously, when you make an investment, you have certain expectations about what the company is going to do in the future uh, and certain achievements that they're going to meet, certain revenue goals and certain cash flow goals. These risks uh, are the things that would prevent your investment from generating you a high return. So, you need to make sure you read through all of them and you need to understand all of them. And again, this is something you really only need to read in one annual report thoroughly. It's not going to change dramatically from year to year when you're looking at past annual reports. Now, once you've gone through the risk factors section, there's uh, some more really not important information here, some stuff about shares and how the stock price has moved over the past five years. That's really not relevant to us at all at this point in our analysis. Uh, the next major section you'll come across is this section called selected financial data, or in this case, it's called selected consolidated financial data. And I don't always read this section, but it can be a good place to quickly source some of the raw data that we need for our spreadsheets. So, um, I always get my raw data from a website called quickfs.net. Uh, however, I always want to double check that those numbers are accurate from the official financial statement. So, sometimes I will come in here and I'll have a glance and you can see we can see the total revenue. That's one of our four key numbers that we need to enter into the spreadsheet. So, I'll go ahead and grab uh, all of those numbers and make sure they're correct. And we can also grab uh, diluted earnings per share from here as well. 
uh, and we can also grab uh, shareholder equity. So those numbers are all available here, although it's not something that I focus on too much as the full financial statements uh, take more of my attention and we'll talk about that when we get to it uh, in this report. But the next important section here is straight after the selected financial data and it is management's discussion and analysis uh, of financial con condition and results of operations. And this is arguably the most important part of the annual report. I think it's the most important part. And the reason why is because it tells us about what drove the success or failure of the business during the year. It also tells us about how their performance compared to last year and even the year before that. And it will often include sort of little snippets of what management strategy is for growing the profits of the business in the future. So, uh, this is super important. I will, this, this is the section that I will focus on the most in an annual report. And I will read this section for many different years of annual reports. So, for Texas Roadhouse, for example, I'll read the 2019 version of uh, management's discussion. I'll read 2018, 17, 16, 15, 14, all the way back to 2010 to understand how management strategy has changed over that time and how has management been successful in achieving that. And it also tells us about what the limitations of the business were. What were the factors that stopped them from growing their revenue in the way that they expected? Uh, what made their profitability or their margins go down a little bit during the period? Was it because there was higher labor costs, for example? And how often does that happen? Is that something that happens every five years for this kind of business? Or is it something that happens every two years and it's really a regular occurrence that margins are getting worse and worse? So, those are the kinds of things that I'm start, starting to think about when I'm reading through uh, this management's discussion section. The other thing to mention in the uh, discussion and analysis section is that this is a good place to start to get a grasp about what the key business indicators are. So, uh, if you've been following the channel, you would know that part of our analysis is that we need to identify the, the unique indicators that tell us about the performance of this particular business in the industry. There are specific numbers in each industry that are driving the performance of the business. And for example, in this Texas Roadhouse example, we can see that within the discussion and analysis section, they talk about key measures we use to evaluate our company. So, these are the measures that management is using to determine whether or not they've been successful during a period or not. And these are some of the key business indicators that I would focus on when I'm analyzing restaurant businesses as well. Uh, for example, number of restaurant openings, how many stores do they open, comparable restaurant sales growth, what has the growth been? Uh, in existing restaurants from year to year if we exclude the growth in sales that would come from opening new restaurants, so average unit volume, how much each restaurant is generating in sales and so on and so forth. So, uh, those kinds of things can be uh, found also in the discussion and analysis section. Now, if we scroll down past all of that uh, discussion and analysis and a couple of other things that are not super important, uh, we get down to the official financial statements. So, uh, these are the three, well, there's four financial statements, but there's three that we focus on, which are the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. So, here's the balance sheet. We then have uh, the income statement, consolidated statement of income and comprehensive income. Uh, this is the statement of uh, change in equity, but we don't really need to worry about that too much. Uh, and then we have the other one we care about, which is the consolidated uh, statement of cash flows. And in these financial statements, this is another good place to get all of our core numbers that we need for filling out the spreadsheet. Of course, we need revenue, which is on the income statement. We need earnings per share, again, on the income statement. We need equity, which is on the balance sheet. And then we need cash flow for owners, which is derived from numbers on the cash flow statement. But um, cash flow for, for owners is a little bit more complicated. If you want to learn more about that, I'll leave a link to it down in the description below to a video that talks about it. Um, and then some of the other numbers we need, we need uh, debt numbers. So we need long-term debt uh, when we're calculating the return on invested capital, again, in the spreadsheet. And then, of course, we need total liabilities and short-term liabilities and current assets. All of those things will be found on the balance sheet and we use those to assess the debt levels within the company. 
Now, the section right below uh, the financial statements is called Notes to Consolidated Financial Statements. And this is really basically a definition of all of the terms that have been used in the financial statements, such as receivables, cash and cash equivalents we've got here, inventory. It basically describes what management means by all of these things. Um, and this is a section that I don't always read. I don't read this in full. Uh, some people choose to, I choose not to. But what I will do is as I'm going through the management's discussion section and as I'm starting to interpret the financial statements and work out where is this revenue coming from, what is this expense, I will look to this section to see what the different definitions are for some of the things that are included in the financial statements. I, For example, I, I might want to understand a little bit more about what the company is spending their marketing money on. What specifically are they doing? Are they doing online marketing? Um, are are they doing sponsorships? Are they uh, doing offline marketing, billboards, that sort of thing, TV advertisements? If I want to know a little bit more about that, I can come in here and see what they're spending their marketing money on or any other kind of uh, term that's being used, such as revenue recognition. How do they recognize revenue? Is it at the point of sale or is it at some other time um, in the future? But essentially, this section is just really my glossary or my, my, uh, my, I guess, dictionary for finding out more about certain terms that management is using. And this definition section or this uh, notes to consolidated uh, statements section really is most of the rest of the, the report. Um, some of these get expanded really quite largely. Um, for example, share-based compensation usually takes up a big chunk when they're talking about all of the different kinds of shares that are compensated to management when the business performs in a certain way. Um, and it kind of just starts to drag out. And as I said, I don't read all of this in full. It's just if I want more information about a particular thing, if a question pops into my head and I don't know the answer to it, often I'll be able to find the answer uh, in here. Um, another example could be, uh, if a company has quite a large amount of debt, um, even though I probably wouldn't be interested in that company, I might be interested in finding out when that debt is due, what are the interest rates on that debt, and what are the payments, interest payments, all of that sort of thing. All of that information would be found in this section. Uh, and then below that, we have what's called uh, an employment agreement. And this is just a bunch of legal jargon that does not matter. You can see for uh, for Texas Roadhouse, it goes for about 100 pages. So, this is just rubbish. Um, I don't particularly think there's anything in here that's worth reading. Um, if, if I'm wrong, please let me know down in the comment section, but I've never found any value in reading through this. I think it's more of a time waster um, than anything. But... Uh, Basically, we've gone through everything that I've that I've described. We've we went through just to sort of summarize. We had the business section at the top. This first section here, business. We have risk factors that we want to look at. Uh, we then have selected financial data. We have management's discussion and analysis of uh, results and operations. We then have the financial statements, and then we have notes to those financial statements or the, the definitions of, uh, of different terms used in those financial statements. But um, that is basically how I go through and I read an annual report. Um, there's some major sections that I look at over and over and over again for many different years of annual reports for multiple years, going back 10 years. There's some sections I read just once, such as the business section, and there's sections that I really don't read at all, such as the notes to consolidated financial statements, which I will only use when I need to find more information. But I hope this video provided some value. And if it did, make sure you leave a like. I very much appreciate it if you can do that and let YouTube know that you did enjoy this content. If you have any thoughts or comments, let me know down in the comment section below. And of course, as always, if you're new around here and you want to see more content like this and you want to develop your understanding of stock analysis, then the best thing you can do is hit subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the notifications. Uh, but for now, I will see you guys in the next video.